Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Dickity up our right hand corner as the Brown Protoss. We have Jayun, bottom left hand corner. We have Hawk starting as the Green Zerg. This is going to be an incredible matchup on Eclipse because, first of all, these guys have played each other a bajillion times. They play each other on the ladder quite often. They're also, I believe, very good friends. But Hawk, number one North American Zerg currently, and currently holds the North American title. But Jayun's versus Zerg is unparalleled. It is so strong. Previous Zerg player himself, he just is really, really good getting some comments from uh, chat that this is teal rather than green. Okay, fair enough, that's teal. Teal, in the teal we have Hawk. But this is gonna be a tough map, in particular for Hawk to take Jayun on, because this is one of those maps where you need to nine pool or go for some sort of 12 pool, over pool, you need your pool out early to deal with early Protoss aggression and potential harassment around your natural expansion. And Jayun is one of those guys that is stellar at it. I'm expecting him to open up Gateway first, dancing with that probe. He is kind of the du jour thing to do these days, but he's also excellent at executing it. He's going to send the probe along the southern rim to avoid Overlord timing. It looks like it is going to be an overpool from Hawk. Now the follow-up question for Jayun is, is, does he continue with Zealot Pressure or is he going to go for a quick Nexus after getting initial Zealot or two out? I believe you can sneak, I think you can still sneak, there's timings to sneak Nexuses out still with all of this, but that probe making its way all the way around now been spotted by that Overlord. Drone was initially hanging out near that natural expansion. You can see with that Zealot coming along the way, Jayun just holding it up, making motions just in case that was a fake out. Spiny pool, just finishing. I'm expecting at least. Well, never mind. Gonna grab gas before producing just a pair of Zerglings. I was expecting uh, f four Zerglings. It looks like <laughs> that was a bit of a fake out. So Hawk pulling that fooled me as well. So initially sent out that drone as though it were a scout and then drew it right back to avoid the probe harassment. So. Clever play from Hawk. Zergling's now out to go ahead and deal. And the Overlord's gonna miss the Zealot coming across that northern rim. Two Zergling, and this, keep in mind, there's not any scouting information behind this. A second pair of Zerglings being produced, but a Zealot plus a probe with Zerglings out of position like this, it's a winning situation. Now that Zealot's been spotted by Hawk, but doesn't look like he has the larva Needs to produce Zerglings immediately. This is going to be a tough defense. Jayun instead, though, checking the 9 o'clock just to see if a quick third was taken. These Zerglings are expecting some sort of harassment near the natural. Instead, going to be able to blockade Jayun's base take for a bit. The probe has been wiped out. Now two Zealots, however, threatening that natural expansion. Two Zerglings mixing it up in Jayun's main. This does tend to be one of those situations that Jayun excels at, despite having Zerglings running around in his base. His multitasking is incredible. Tech Delayer, so looks like two base play initially. The Zergling's getting boxed out by that Zealot, and these two Zealots able to make it all the way to the main. Two versus six. Should be Zealot wins. Jayun trying to mic with that back, taking a bit of free damage though. Additional Zerglings produced just in the nick of time. The Zealot at the rear being wiped out. So five Zealots standing. Forge being dropped. Nexus being produced much later than it would be otherwise, but it looks like that Zealot able to clean up the Zerglings at the main. So some disruption on both ends. Excellent defense by Hawk. Assimilator warping in. Lair is finished. And looks like we're just gonna see two hatch spire play from Hawk. I think that is massive respect to Jayun's versus Zerg play. Let's see if Jayun is able to scout it and sniff it out. That probe trying to make its way across. Gonna be vital bit of information here. But that probe has been wiped out, and now Jayun playing in the dark. I don't know if he realizes that this isn't the standard three base or not. Cybernetic score warping in behind this, so needs to get that Stargate down just to have some form of defense. And having lost those Zealots earlier, these Zerglings are able to take pot shots at this gateway on the front. Cannon just warping in. And the Zerglings backing out to the very last second. 
but really putting the pressure on Jeyun. Gateway heavily damaged. Keep in mind, with some Mutalist Micro on the front, could bust things open. Zergling spreading everywhere just to make sure that no additional Zealots snuck out. So good map vision. 9 o'clock base being grabbed. Jeyun in a tough spot here, though. Stargate being built. Hawk actually supply blocked himself here. Critical air. As the Spire finished, so getting armor first. Ugh, that's unfortunate, because that would have been... With the timing of this? Yeah, preventative Fortune cannons being dropped. Second assimilator, but you can see just how wide this natural expansion... There's a single Dragoon out to provide a spot of helpful anti-air, but the Stargate's just finishing. If he had that Overlord up right that second, oof. That might have been game over. Second extractor being grabbed instead. Mutalist now taking flight. A lot of Zerglings towards the front. And that's going to... Yeah, just that chunk of time right there. Going to give plenty of time to get that cannon online. And that first Corsair out. And this Dragoon can act a bit as a buffer between both locations. I don't see any Scourge joining this to go for uh, Corsair Snipe. So the Corsair tried, whoop, getting out there a little bit too far. I think with the timing of this, June realizing that it is uh, two was a two hatch Mutalisk opener rather than earlier three hatch, third base, starting to produce a little bit. Mutalisk trying to find some ground in between. Range being upgraded, interestingly enough. So Jalen looks like he wants to go for some sort of Dragoon timing attack out of this. Probe being picked off as it's dropping a gateway. And the Corsair count is actually briefly halted. Looks like a third is going to join the fray, but I was expecting more Corsair out in the field to help deal with this threat. This might be just a, I'm expecting Hawk to play lighter on the Mutalisks here in the mid game rather than going for a striker style Mutalisk assault. But this could also be to try to fake out Hawk and make him think that plus one weapons is being upgraded. And give and Although I'm not sure that makes much sense considering that would bait more of a all-in air attack. Now that gateway being heavily damaged earlier. Yeah, being pecked away at. Zergling's waiting near the freight. Fourth hatchery being planted. Fifth hatchery at the natural expansion. Some scourge moving out, and Hawk. Yeah, going to sit back, and it looks like he's just going to play 5-hatch Mutalisk, drop an Evolution Chamber, get his third gas up and running, and move back towards just some flat macro. However, additional Dragoons being produced. That gateway looks like it might get picked off before this Dark Templar is able to take the field. Dragoon blocking that gap in between. Dragoon, yeah, trying to join on the high ground, yeah, it's just going to be five Mutalists, and actually the five Mutalists plus just the three Corsair, those Dragoon, should be sufficient to go ahead and push these Mutalists back, at least at this count. It looks like that Dark Templar is going to be able to take the field. There's no Overlord nearby, so these Zerglings very likely going to end up losing their lives. More Mutalists starting to press up. And that with the Scourge might be enough to open things up. But I think Hawk mostly trying to present a threat to Jayun. Jayun not really respecting it. He's got four gateways behind this. Has continued to macro up. He's got a huge pro count. SimCity here at the 9 o'clock. Plus one spines being upgraded. There is an overlord overhead to provide some defense. Another Sunken Colony being built. We do have the Hydral Sten to create a transition towards Hydra. But a bunch of Scourge. And I think, yeah... I think Hawk saw that spinning, that spinning cybernetic score and was expecting plus one weapon Corsair and instead invested a huge amount of gas in anti-air that just is non-existent. Instead, we have Dragoons and High Templar out on the field. Sidestorm just finishing, so clever play. Full control group of Mutalists, however, able to dive in and engage. So maybe some Sidestorm going to be necessary to defend this. At the main, in the meantime, a lot of probes going to get wiped out. Dragoons trying to make their way across, but keep in mind these Dragoons do have range and they have plus one weapon. Storm trying to protect, well, actually catching a bit of the Corsair, but trying to catch some of the Scourge. The Mutalist pulling out, 
after getting a lot of probe kills there. Sees that it was a six gateway pump. And Hawk macroed up to 42 drones behind this. Dark Templar out in the field, not able to find any sort of location. And Hawk isn't finished with this Air Force yet. Diving right back in. Additional photon cannons haven't been, but a great side storm. Catching a lot of those mutilists. The High Templar gets picked off. A second side storm catching a handful of probes. Ooh, a good amount of probes. But also catching the mutilists underneath. And Hawk, yeah, just really abusing the Sin City now. So yes, these mutilists have taken a lot of damage. But they've really taken out a lot of probes and debilitated. I mean, that was a lot of side storm expended. But I believe Jane wanted to use at another location. Three bases, additional hatcheries tacking on. I think Hawk has bought himself enough time and enough gas to proceed with his uh, machinations. Actually getting plus two armor, so it looks like realizing that it's just going to be Dragoons on the ground. Wanting to make them a little bit beefier and continue with the Mutalist play into the mid game. The High Templar are going to be very, very exposed. Mutalist now engaging at that natural expansion, continuing to pick away at Jane's economy. Jane sneaking a base in that bottom right. Hawk just not spotting it really, otherwise he'd be able to assault and take it and deal with it very rapidly. And Jayun desperately also trying to get the 12 o'clock base up. Realizing he's got to play economic catch-up, just going to try to play sneaky. And moving all of his Dragoons and Zealots out. I think he wants to try to draw these Mutalists back. Lurkers are morphing to the front. I don't know that there's an observatory out behind all this tech. Yeah, so no air detection. So it's just going to be up to High Templar to make it happen. The Dragoons, not sure if they engaged from underneath and, draw, and drew these units back or not. But Hawk briefly pulling the Mutalist back. So 1 o'clock base, sneaky expansion being grabbed. High Templar waiting to potentially deal with these Mutalisks. But Hawk now with a big worker lead. Even on supply, which usually means Protoss is behind. Let's see if he finds this base now. Yeah, sneaks in, finds it. It's going to be able to pick off that probe. I don't think he's going to be able to whittle down the Nexus, though, with this amount of Dragoons moving in. Plus two weapons on those Dragoons. And now the ha problem for Hawk, actually, is, is has he kept up on upgrades? And the answer is no. So he's still working on plus one spines. If Jayun can field this army out, even though he's even on supply, which is usually a Zerg advantage, he's got plus two weapons, plus one army. He's been pumping the upgrades this entire time. So these bases are coming online. And he might be able to just run over this army through the sheer upgrade advantage. Sneaky, sneaky Jayun behind all this. So I would not be shocked, despite playing from behind, and somehow, how did he sneak these bases up in the midst of this? So Mutal's making their way back out. But yeah, they're going to have to withdraw, and I'm, I'm wondering if that was a cost that was in the plus two carapace of the Mutalisk, or what? Hawk with the supply lead. But again, the, dis the supply lead is just very, very deceptive here. Because this army is going to hit hard. Plus three weapons being researched. And Jayun's actually in a situation where he can just start assaulting if he wants. But it looks like what he wants to do is instead stage back and play more of a long-term macro-oriented game. An Archon just in open field, maybe trying to catch Mutalist for free. And I kind of like this because it plays very much against Hawk's standard style. Hawk is usually looking for his opponent to come to him. And I think looking at these upgrades, what Hawk has to be expecting is, is wow, he's got a huge upgrade advantage. He's going to come into me and just hit some sort of timing. And instead, Jayun just sitting back, macroing up, and playing for the long game, and has a pretty sizable lead with his base holdings in the midst of it. And he's going to have the upgrades to also back it up. Hawk trying to sneak a base. Wow, in enemy territory there. The Mutalist being whittled down. Looks like Hawk also, I think, recognizing the situation now, is going to try to grab the 9 o'clock. The Mutalisks Eating a lot of Dragoon Fire underneath. Some more Zerglings starting to stream out. It is going to take Hive Tech to equalize this. Consume being researched. But if Jayun can just get some Reavers and some High Templar out in the field, he'll be fine. Zerglings streaming up. Adrenal upgraded Zerglings with Swarm, though, could very quickly make short work of this Dragoon army. And I think Hawk recognizing that, trying to catch, is able to catch 
Well, nope, never mind. Archon able to create a save there. That was a lot of re just the exchanges that happened just here over the last couple minutes. You can see where it's just Jayun playing for the, the long-term win because he's chomping through a lot of army for free there. Handful of cannons to the north. This actually might be a dead base. Zergling streaming in. Probes trying to protect the cannon lines. But again, the Adrenal upgrade's there, so they can chew through this extremely rapidly. Archon's making the way up, so they should be able to save the Nexus, but they're not able to save the cannons. And right now, actually, the probes dying might play a little bit in Jayun's favor here, because he was actually a little bit overprobed. Right now, as the perfect probe count to run with the bases he's hoping for. And Hawk, look at this. So at the 5 o'clock location, sneaking in Nidus Canal, this could be big trouble to potentially assault into Jayun. Zealot's now starting to join the fray. That will, and there obviously have the Archon and an army. Wow. And look at all the energy on these High Templar. Six High Templar moving out. Jayun may be going to just stage up and take that 11 o'clock. But one problem for Jayun is, is he's got a lot of distance to cover to try to defend absolutely everything. So Lurkers and Defiler peeking out, and Jayun's army is in the upper left. High Templar, are they going to get picked off by those Zerglings? I think he's lucky that, that they were just, not, oof, unfortunately on move command right there. Otherwise, would have gotten some kills. Zerglings streaming across, want to pick off more High Templar. Two High Templar getting picked off. Jayun is honestly lucky it wasn't more. But this is going to be trouble. Is that 5 o'clock base where it could be a staging area for backstabs for Hawk. But now Jayun taking this very beefy plus 3 weapons army, moving it forward, has no observers though. So needs to make it happen with High Templar if he's going to try to take this ridge. Now peeking out to that natural expansion, maybe hoping there's less lurker coverage there, or they were more bundled up. Fortunately, not finding anything, so he's just going to have to be relegated to uh, backing off. Never mind, now an observer there, but it's a single observer, so he's got to protect that. I don't see any Hydralisks or anything else to pick it off, however. And this is a massive amount of Dragoons. Plague drop catching a few of these troops, but with a lot of side storms still left, cleaning up a lot of that army, now that natural expansion at risk of being completely breached. Reinforcements that were in the bottom right being funneled back. The Nidus Canal is down. So Jayun's offense also working for defense here as Hawk having to deal with attacks at his natural expansion. The Dragoons, however, being pushed back by that Dark Swarm. More Psy Storm being dropped. I think this army is going to get cleaned up between the Dark Swarm and everything else for Hawk, but a huge supply lead now for Jayun. And he's grabbing the 11 o'clock behind this. More Lurkers starting to push forward, but yeah, level 3 weapons, level 2 armor for Jayun in a very nice situation. In a split map situation here, all Jayun has to do, honestly, with the amount of damage he's done, is make sure that he keeps top left out of Hawk's hands and takes it himself and maybe drops some assaults here at the 9 o'clock. Wondering if he's even going to put a... Uh, yeah, putting the robotics facility on point to get those Reavers out on location. It is very rare to see any Zerg, or I should say any Protoss, go for just a straight-up long-term macro game like this. Even rare to see it go at, like, Hawk to get out long-term macroed. But Jayun making it happen on both fronts. Main's mind out, so it is going to be four bases. Jayun checking top left. I don't know that he's going to stake a claim for that himself. Mostly just, yeah, needs to make sure that stays out of Hawk's hands. Hawk grabbing that bottom right hand base. I'm still wondering if he's ever, if he's going to dedicate any attack troopings here, if he just wants to hold it and keep it out of Jayun's hands equivalently. Big attack moving at the 9 o'clock. However, those zealots marching in single file... And Lurker is able to sweep through yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, so Jayun's going to have to back off, eating a plague for his effort. And a lot of his cloak units also under plague. So, looks like a High Templar getting caught midfield as well. Honestly, the first bad engagement I think we've seen from Jayun up to this stage, but he's still sitting back, yeah, near 200 supply. Hawk has a lot of ground to try to catch up. Jayun can push some assaults if he wants. He can just move some forays forays so you can just do some raids wipe out some troops plus one shield now online zealots moving up getting the exchange they want with zerglings out in the field Ooh, getting eating some plague though zerglings 
getting plagued as well. I wonder if Zerglings even care about getting plagued. Big plague being dropped at the 11 o'clock location. Reaver just misses it, and that's going to be a key unit in that defense at that location. It looks like there, yeah, there's more Reavers being produced at Caddy Corner. So basically, it's going to be reinforcements to protect the natural, the 1 o'clock, and Reavers on site to help defend at the 11 o'clock and that bottom right-hand base. Lurker staging up for Hawk to maybe try to go uphill against this. More Plague being dropped. Only catches three Zelts and an Archon with it. And Psystorm catching everything else on the low ground. So those Lurkers very quickly getting obliterated. And it looks like Jayun might want to make another shot here at the 9 o'clock. Spreading the troops out this time to engage. Catching one Lurker immediately. Streams of reinforcements through that Nidus Canal. But that's going to make it Psystorm bait. So many grouped up Lurkers. Hawk at the very last second drawing the units back out, but not before they've taken heavy damage. Nidus Canal still up, but pretty much everything else on the forward field's been wiped out, but Jayun out of troops at this location is just going to back up as the Zergling's starting to stream in. They're looking to pick off the High Templar. Archon's standing and fighting. It looks like some High Templar are going to be able to retreat. Hawk honestly dodging a bullet right there. And his ability to just toss out Pure both. Jayun a little bit too high in the worker count with the 80 probes, which is cutting a little bit into his army, but he still has the overall supply advantage. He's loaded up some shuttles and High Templar. It looks like he might go for some storm drops, so creating a distractionary attack top left. Let's go ahead and get rid of this so you guys can see it in all its glory. So, distractionary attack, 9 o'clock. Psy storm drop blanketing here. And two, three drones remain. They're going to scoop right back up and back out. Looks like there was a plague in top left that's going to draw the rest of those troops back, but that wasn't really a big dedication of attack force, and honestly, completely emptying that drone line, totally worth it. And Jayun can do this all day. He's, Hawk has to come to him. You can see the single Dark Templar just camping in that top, that top left-hand corner. Just has to keep that out of Hawk's hands. Going for another drop now at the natural. Unfortunately, well, there's drones here to, to storm. Yeah, obliterating more, but honestly, this wasn't much of a saturated base to deal with. But Hawk pushing in with a huge attack in the meantime. Did the Reaver get caught? I think the Reaver might have gotten caught in the midst of this. So unless Jayun reinforces this very rapidly, never mind, the Reavers were in the shuttle. That's what happened to it. So they've been unloaded. Now dropping... The Reavers plus the cannons might be sufficient. The Observer is there. This Reaver needs to have... Yeah, needs the uh, Scarabs built, however, to provide sufficient defense. And Jayun, in the meantime, has shuttled up a Zealot to go ahead and take out that Spire. Morphed an Archon at the Natural Expansion to wipe out that gas. So utilizing everything out in the field. Shuttle's wiped out, but the Spire stands, but you can see how much havoc its complement reeked. Psystorm on the Hydalus as they're trying to march up. Hawk realizing he's got to wipe out a base of Jayun's, and this is probably his best shot. Wants to take the high ground, so maybe he can capitalize and take the top left. Archon morphing on site. Jayun's still sitting 80 supply up, though, which is a rare situation this late in the game for Hawk. I'm sure Hawk's Hurting on workers as well, just down to 37. Looks like he wants to maybe try to push some Zerglings up. Reaver just has a sliver of health, regenerating shield pretty rapidly. More reinforcements making their way across. Some Hydralisks in No Man's Land looks like they're going to get wiped out. And now starting to check that upper left. But yeah, that might be a feast of Zerglings for that Dark Templar. Yeah, they're going to get wiped out. Trying to keep an eye, yeah, I was going to say, I'm looking for another shuttle. But this time, a Reaver going to join the grouping and redrop the Scourge. Not able to save this expansion. Nidus Canal is gone as well, so no reinforcements to help. So Hawk might actually need to micro that carefully, otherwise the Reaver might be able to open up this entire base. There are Lurkers there that need to reposition. Reaver is moving too far forward against these Zerglings in the meantime. One of them getting wiped out. Overly ambitious. Plague drop. Ooh, catching a lot of units. 
But yeah, the Reaver able to completely wipe out. A Sega Nidus looks like it's being built to deal with this. But this base is shut down. Hawk now down to 27 workers. So things looking... I'm wondering if this is going to turn... No, I, I was going to say... Maybe if Hawk just... If he can get favorable trades... Maybe having the fewer worker count might be beneficial. More drops here at the 9 o'clock, shutting that down as well. Jane being a menace. Absolutely everyone on the map lost a Reaver, but... Taking out additional drones and Hawk having trouble getting the resources in. Minerals have been absolutely wiped out, so... 8 o'clock, mined out. 9 o'clock... Currently barely mining it, having trouble getting the mining up. Jane moving out to shut down that base proper. Does have lurkers up on the high ground. Also might be able to pick off those observers. Jane doesn't like it and he doesn't need to attack into it, so he's just going to back out. But unusual situation to see a Zerg starving out. Main mined out, natural expansion mined out. He still has the base in the bottom right. The 8 o'clock is mined out and the 9 o'clock is running. So you got two bases versus two bases and an additional base that is potentially in Jane's control in the upper left. And yeah, all those Zerglings got wiped out. Zerglings moving forward, it looks like Hawk trying to push up because he needs this now as Jane has a sizable bank behind him, but Jane can come from high ground to low ground and drop a lot of storm on all of this. And doing exactly that. Reavers being shuttled across as well. And Hawk, yeah, this is going to be G, probably GG after this army gets cleared out. Shuttle's going to be taken care of. Observer's going to be taken care of, but there's no lurkers left. Jane doesn't even need to risk taking this base. And Hawk is basically out of resources. Lone Zealot kind of moving out of location. So he's got to engage Jane in the top left with an army that is half the size. So it would take some magic plagues to make that happen. Probe's now pulling out. Now that that bottom right is mined. wonder if he's going to do some distance mine. No, he is going to go ahead and grab the Nexus upper left. More plague being dropped. Again, catching the Archon. Zerglings being Psystrom. And i got to say, even in these small exchanges, James done a fantastic job of just ending up with more... You can just see him kind of squeezing additional minerals. Pilfering those minerals out of Hawk's bank. Cannons being dropped. Two Reavers in position. Archon fleet. What is a group of Archons, really? A power overwhelming. A power overwhelming of Archons on the front. Zealots there as well to negate the storm. Plus there's... Or to negate the uh, Dark Swarm. And High Templar as well with a lot of Side Storm to drop otherwise. A bulk of Archons. I like that. A bulk of Archons here. Distance mining happening for Jane in the top left. Hawk is mining at least at that 9 o'clock. But it just feels like it is too little too late. He doesn't have a lot of... He'd have to go through a lot of enemy, ter enemy territory even to get a decent attack at this. So instead, just drawing all those units down and Jayun using that funnel just to drop Storm doesn't even care about his Archons here and whittling through the Lurkers and the Hydralisks as they're on approach. Looks like full upgrades are at least there for Hawk at this stage. But it's matched by full up upgrades on the opposite corner. So Lurker is streaming their way down. But there's plenty of Reavers and lots of cannons to deal with anything left. And reinforcements are marching their way across. Shuttle got wiped out, though. So small benefit there from Hawk. But yeah, it still doesn't seem sufficient. 178 supply versus 84. Honestly, waiting for uh, Hawk to GG here. Because it's kind of... This is checkmate, really. It would take an, a magic attack to steam through this. I think he was hoping that maybe there would be less... That maybe the swarm would be sufficient to get through it instead dropping a plague. There's the GG. James showing why he is such a phenom in this matchup. Incredible play. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.